move into the final, or the, I guess, maybe the second to last subject, um, the cactoidea. And we're gonna focus through this presentation on the ball and barrel cacti of North and South, or North America, sorry, um, in the cactiae. Um, and we're going to first do that by looking at their aerials. So here is where we were with our Ostracylindropuncha or an opunciad, where we have that leaf base, you'll remember I said it would become more important later, becomes enlarged. And the leaf blade, the photosynthetic part of the leaf becomes reduced. And so here's our leaf blade, our leaf base, and then that aerial, that axillary bud, is in the leaf axle between the leaf and the stem. When we move into the uh, cactoidea um, subfamily, within the cactus family, what we see is the aerial, the axillary bud, moving from this axillary position up onto the very tip of that leaf base, and then the leaf blade becoming greatly reduced, and then in older tissues disappearing entirely. So let's use this acanthocerus aerial as kind of our typical um, cactoidea aerial. So here we can see, believe it or not, a small little scale leaf. This is a very young aerial, so it still has this leaf, which might fall off later on. Um, and then we've got this old spine just adjacent to that leaf. And then if we go further up the aerial, we've got these younger spines, which means that they must be produced by a axillary bud or meristem. And that meristem is just um, adjacent to those newer spines. And that is what's currently producing them. So let's take this aerial and make a lateral or longitudinal, sorry, section of it. And this is what we see. You can see that little scale leaf at the bottom side of the aerial. You can see that older spine. You can tell it's an older spine because it's um, staying this red color with a lot of secondary cell walls. It's very woody tissue. We've got our younger spine here. And then at the very, very top of the meristem, just adjacent to the um, stem of the cactus, or the aerial, sorry. If we go to the upper side of the aerial here, just adjacent to the stem, we can see that little dome of dense, quickly dividing cells, um, and that is the meristem. That's what's producing these spines, and it's also, if this cactus branches or flowers, that's where this little group of cells will change into a branch or a flower. And you can see a little bit of a tear here, and these, um, these cacti are actually quite difficult to section because we've got very soft tissue adjacent to very uh, hard tissue in these spines. And so it's really a, a balancing act. Um, uh, how much do you soften the tissue? Because if you soften it too much, um, you'll destroy the softer tissue. Um, but if you don't soften it enough, you can't get a nice thin section of this hard tissue up here. But um, in any case, you can see in this gymnocalysium that meristem has turned into a flower. You can see how that flower is forming on the upper side of that aerial, which is where that meristem is located, where that group of quickly dividing cells is located. When we look at an echinocerus here, because remember, we've established that a cactus flower here is basically a flowering stem. It's a, cac it's a flower embedded within stem tissue down here. And we can see, even in a group of plants that is thought to be relatively leafless, can see larger accentuated scale leaves on those flower buds. And then of course, in the leaf axle, we have a aerial. And coming from that aerial, we have modified leaves or spines. You can just see the, the really the similarity between these aerials and the aerials on a vegetative stem when we take a longitudinal section of that flower bud. You can see, looks a lot like stem tissue here. Um, and it looks a lot like that other picture of that acanthocerus aerial that I already showed. So we've got our leaf at the bottom of the aerial, followed by an older spine stained a dark red color due to those secondary cell walls. We've got a younger spine here. And then at the very top of the aerial, we've got a little dome of dense, quickly dividing cells for the meristem. In some species of uh, cactus here, we actually see that meristem move further up 
the um, leaf base um, almost back into that regular axillary position. So here in Hamatocactus, that meristem is um, just moved away from that aerial where the, the spines come out a little bit. In Coryphantha, it's moved quite far away, but we have a furrow marked F for furrow connecting the two halves of the meristem. And in Mammillaria, we just simply have two separate um, unconnected parts of the same meristem. So we can see that in both this Mammillaria, we've got at the tip of this tubercle or modified leaf base, the part of the meristem that produced the modified uh, leaves or spines. And then back in that axillary position here, we have the part of the meristem that will produce branches, and in this case, a flower. See that same thing on this Coryphantha, except for the two halves of the meristem are connected via this furrow. And instead of a flower, um, we're going to be looking at these nectaries um, in greater detail. So we're going to choose this Coryphantha, and we're going to make a longitudinal section of this entire tubercle. And when we do that and look at the very apex of the tubercle where the spines come out, I think this kind of looks like a fist um, in, in a way, little fingers here uh, for our spines. Um, you can see we've got our spines. Then we actually have a layer of cork cells underneath those spines. The purpose of this cork is that after these spines have been fully grown via that little meristem at the base, this cork tissue cements all those spines together into a cluster. And that way, when an animal brushes against a cactus, it won't just pull out a single spine that might not do much. It will pull out that whole aerial, which will act like a caltrop and maybe keep that animal from messing with the cactus in the future. So we can see a lot of things in this picture, but one thing that we don't see are little, uh, our little dome of dense, quickly dividing cells. And in order to see that, we're going to have to travel upwards on the tubercle to where that um, nectary or gland, nectar gland, is located. So here's our nectary. This is actually the topic here of my uh, ma master's thesis, uh, is the structure of these glands. And uh, this is a beautiful slide that is going to be part of that. But for our purposes, you can see at the very top, just upwards from that gland, we can finally see our little dome of dividing cells, our meristem tissue. So this is where a branch would form, and this is where more of these glands in the future might form as well. Next, we're going to turn our attention to the um, stem anatomy of these um, members of the cactoidea, and we're going to use this cactus, as Techium gladesii, as our subject. So this is a beautiful plant. You can see these wonderful bicolor flowers. So as always, uh, let's cut it up. Uh, one thing, one last thing to note on this picture is you can see these kind of ridges on that Aztecium um, uh, ribs have. And those ridges are going to be kind of important in some of these slides I'm going to show. But in order to study the anatomy of this plant, we're going to use a technique that is commonly used in both plant anatomy and animal and human anatomy as well. And that is called serial sectioning. And what serial sectioning means is we basically take slice after slice of an organ or a stem or a tissue and save every single slice. And then we can look at them in sequence to determine what the three-dimensional structure of that tissue is. So these are just a few slides um, from a, a, a complete sectioning of an Aztecium stem. So we're going to start at the base of that stem where it's a little bit more round and then end up basically at the very top where we can see that characteristic kind of star shape with those um, ribs of the cactus. There's a, obviously a lot more than just uh, six slides here as part of this series, but we're just gonna look at a few, um, a few of these sections to create an image of what that cactus looks like. So here we are at the very base of the cactus. This kind of looks like a, 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 a maybe a raindrop or a water splatter on glass. You can see these um, vascular bundles are kind of this strange anomalous shape radiating outwards. This is all that secondary xylem or cactus wood that we're looking at here. So now we'll travel further up to younger and younger tissues. So we've got less of that wood, less of that secondary xylem. 
And we've got smaller little vascular bundles still formed in that ring. We've got pith towards the center, that center ground tissue for storage. We've got the cortex to the outside, that outer ground tissue for storage. Now we're at the point where the vascular bundles are even smaller. They're forming this little star shape here um, to reflect the kind of star shape of the plant. You can see these vascular bundles here are little vascular traces that connect this central cylinder of vascular tissue to the aerials on the outside, the, those axillary buds on the outside of the plant down the sides of the rib. Travel up further. Here we're actually underneath that ap apical um, meristem. So if you think back to one of those very early slides, that longitudinal section of that Wingardia, how we had that little dome at the very top of the plant of cells, here's kind of a plant's eye view of the inside of that uh, meristem. You can see the cells are all quite dense here, a little smaller than the cells towards the outside. But when we move a little even further up, just a little bit, we can see that, that actual dome in the center of the slide here. You'll remember that I said that those ribs are going to play, or the ribs on the tuber, or the ridges on the ribs of the cactus are going to play a role here. And that's because we're starting to actually break through the top. We've got that very, that, that very small dome of cells at the top here. And then as we're breaking through, we can see those um, ridges on the ribs of the cactus start to uh, show up here. It's very pretty, especially in this next slide. Almost looks like, a, I was going to say, a, a, some sort of starfish with or a brittle star with a, um, a bod, central body with these five sort of, of um, legs coming out. Or maybe some lightning bolts. Or uh, It's just a really pretty pattern that nature has created um, in this cactus that without making these slides, really, we wouldn't get to see. Um, so we're going to continue going up to some older ribs and we get an even more um, kind of strange pattern as we've got almost a, an interference pattern you could say of all the different ribs of the cactus kind of coming together or different parts of the different ribs with the ridges. It's very cool. But one unusual thing that we can notice are these strange circular cells. They almost look like bubbles or uh, maybe there was a problem during sectioning that caused these to tear out. So whenever something looks kind of strange in a cactus anatomical section, uh, we always hit it with polarized light. And when we do, we can see that um, Maltese cross interference pattern, which means we're looking at crystals. And these, because they're not spiky balls, we can't call them druses, we've got to call them something else. So these are spherocrystals. And uh, interestingly, I, I did a little bit of research. We don't know what these are made of. Um, we know that the druses are calcium oxalate, but we don't actually know the compound that these crystals are made of. So now we're going to do the same thing with this plant, a little larger cactus within the cac cactea group within the cactoidea subfamily, um, Astrophytum capricorni. We're going to start by taking a section at the very bottom, then we're going to take a section about halfway up the stem. So here's our section at the bottom. This is just beautiful. It looks like a starburst, um, or, or I, you know, you could come up with a lot of different things that this um, this cactus wood looks like. Um, just beautiful. Um, so, like I said, we are at the base of the stem. This is the oldest part of the stem. So we have a lot of wood here, a lot of secondary xylem laid down by that lateral meristem, which is located just to the outside of that wood. Next, if we travel further up the stem, we can see probably more regular cactus vascular bundles. These are younger, so they don't have the amount of secondary xylem that that older tissue had. But wait a second, we've got little bundles within the cortex embedded within that ground tissue. These are very unusual within the plant, um, uh, the plant root or the plant family, I should say. Plant kingdom, that's right, <laughs> sorry very unusual within the plant kingdom, but relatively common among succulent plants. And that includes these cacti. And the reason they have these little vascular bundles or veins um, inside the cortex, we call them cortical bundles because where they're located, uh, is to provide the, this vast amount of storage tissue with water and nutrients. 
So these are very typical cortical bundles uh, for cacti. But uh, astrophytums are of course known for the awesome flocking that they have on the outside of their stems. So we would be remiss if we didn't make a slide of that as well. And when we do, this is what it looks like. Um, it's, I was actually quite surprised that, they, that all these little trichomes are basically plant hairs. Um, it's the botanical word for a plant hair is a trichome. Uh, come from the same point. So it almost looks like a little tassel or a little pom-pom that you might get at a football game um, coming out of the skin of this plant. You can see a, a little more tearing here. Once again, some of these cactus tissues, it's, it's hard with the, the harder um, tissues towards the outside of the cactus versus these softer tissues to the inside, um, making a good section of that.